Well, welcome to Jacob's Well, as you know it right now. Um, it's fleeting, it won't last, so uh, enjoy it. You know, there's something very singular about uh, Jacob's Well, as it is right now, because, you know, as I said, uh, it, it isn't what it once was, and it's not what it will be. I, three years ago, Jacob's Well was simply an idea that I was afraid to mention to my wife. Um, in six months from now, I would say what we think of as Jacob's Well is only going to be half of um, both who and where Jacob's Well is going to be. And that's something I'm going to want to be talking with you all about. And so a lot of changes, you know, why all the changes? Why all the hard work to do that? Why all the um, pain for those of us who really hate change and to deal with change? You know, why all that? And the answer is really pretty simple. It's, you know, because it matters. It really does. It's because it matters. Jacob's Well has mattered to us, and we truly believe that Jacob's Well is going to matter a lot to people, other people whom God has called for it to matter in their lives as well. That's a biggie for us. In this series, we've been looking at the fact that we as human beings, we, we want, in fact, we need things to matter in our lives. And God shares that. God wants things to matter in our lives as well. And in the New Testament of the Bible, that last about third of the Bible, there's a letter called the Ephesians. A man named Paul, who was one of the followers after Jesus, after Jesus' time, um, he wrote this letter and we, to a congregation in a place called Ephesus, uh, where it got, got its name. And he hits these points, these points about what really matters and how God is using that and how God is involved with all that. Now, he doesn't prove anything. Now, you can't prove these things. They're unprovable. Um, but he does propose some things, and he invites us to test drive his proposals. He says, these are the, this is what God set up, how God wants our lives and our world to matter and how we can work together to have that all happen. You've got to try it out and find out. Does it make sense? Does it work? When, when you start testing this, do the proposals that God offers actually start matching what your experience is? So you say, yeah, I think I could maybe trust that and maybe try it a little bit more. Now, in Ephesians chapter 4, this section that we're looking at today, um, I think it is an exciting part because it grounds us as a church, and it tells us that there's three ways um, to understand the, how, great, how a church is great. And the first is that a great church is clear about its oneness. And if we want to be a, clear, a great church, we need to be clear about our oneness. That's really a big one. The first... Um, six verses of chapter 4 are all about that. In fact, it talks about it in seven ways. And again, if you know anything about uh, Hebrew numerology, the number seven is very, very significant. It could be that Paul just happened to list seven things, but I would be willing to bet that he knew that this was the perfect number. Seven is the ultimate number, so he listed seven ways just to underline the point, um, something that we'd miss. He says that uh, we are to be one in body, we're to be one in spirit, in the hope of our calling, um, there's one Lord, there's one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all. All of these are the oneness of it. What he's really driving at isn't that we're one and that we always agree on everything, but that we are one in action, that we unite as one body that's doing one thing, um, accomplishing each of us in our own ways, each of us according to our own gifts, each of us according to the personality, the experiences, the callings within that body that God has given us, but we unite and act in one way. United in these, we unite in these things, those seven things, we do not divide over them. We can have differences within them, but we nonetheless unite around all that. Um, and so it's our vision that drives us. And um, in Sunday gatherings, we really try to use Sunday as a way to help us to do that, to see past differences and to see how we can unite over these things. In fact, um, at the very beginning of the worship service, when four or five of you are here, on Sundays, this video runs every week. And I just want you to see it now because some of you have never seen it. <laughs>
those few sentences that are on that, we try to convey that what is this oneness, what is this vision that we all are a part of in our own unique ways. Uh, we have a core value. We have these lists of nine core values that Jacob Soul is a part of. And um, the one you'll see that on your, on your sheet is that we focus on the mission that unites, not the details that divide, all right? Because we value unity and diversity. Those are not incompatible. Unity and diversity are very much a part of one another. A, a question that we should always be asking is, what are we going to be doing together now? What is it that we are all going to be doing together? It's an important question for Jacob Swell to be asking all the time. Um, the second thing that Ephesians talks about is that a great church is also clear that all of its people are gifted. All right? And we find this particularly in verses 7 um, and then 7 and 11. And there's that little excursus that I pulled out that's in the middle. And you can go take your Bible and read it at home later. But um, you see, we don't just need each other in order to have X number of people because you've got to have so many people. No, we need each other because there are a lot of skills needed, a lot of gifts, experiences, personalities needed in order to make us whole and healthy. God has called us to do things that there is no way I could begin to do. There's no way that any one of us could begin to do. And uh, the more people we have and the more we value the way that each of us is uniquely gifted in God, um, the more able we are to do that. In fact, if you want to you know, find this here, um, on the second paragraph, let's just read that together, these first two verses, 7 and 11. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. And then it goes on and says, why? To equip the saints for the, as we already talked about. So all of us have been equipped in gifts. And those, those four things, those four gifts are just examples. He's just talking about, the list goes on and on. I mean, there, there is a different variation on the gifts that God has uh, give, given us that is uh, unique to each and every one of us. Uh, that's an important thing to remember as well. So we, we try to remember that each of us is gifted. I play a very visible role here at Jacob's Well. You know, I'm the one who stands up in front of people and talks a lot. Dawn does that. Nate's up here singing a lot. That doesn't mean without, that we're particularly important. There's a difference between visibility or prominence and importance. There are other roles that may be very much behind the scenes that can be incredibly important. You know, if, if you are connected to Jacob's Well and you have found something life-changing because of it, whoever it is that connected you here is the most important person to you. It, we may never even know who that was. That's okay. That's how it works. I mean, you think of your human body. We have some very visible parts of our body um, that are not particularly important. And we have some incredibly important parts of our body that are completely invisible. It's the same way within the body of Christ. And so we have this core value that uh, everyone is a minister. We value every person's calling from Christ. And that's an important thing for us to remember and that guides a lot of our decisions every day. Um, a third thing then that uh, a great church needs to be clear about is that it is meant to grow. And we've talked about this already. But every church, in order to be great, needs to be clear that it was meant to grow. And you'll find that in this, the finishing verses there of this passage in Ephesians. Again, Paul, coincidence or not, mentions seven ways in which we're growing. He comes back to that theme in those four short verses, five short verses, I can count, five short verses, and mentions it seven times, just to prove that this is big, folks. I'm making a point here. Don't miss it, OK? So he underlines it that way. Um, our core value around this is that we must grow larger and smaller at the same time. God loves everybody. God wants to touch everybody's lives, all of our neighbors. And God would, you know, would like to have Jacob's Well be one of the vehicles of doing that. But as we grow larger, God doesn't want us to also become hollow or just superficial. So uh, we need to also, you know, it's the outward and the inward. We also need to grow smaller at the same time, maintain those connections within people. We use uh, group life as our primary way of doing that. That's why you know, we say the two things we really want you to do is we want you to come to worship, we want you to be a part of group life with us as well so that this community can be smaller at the same time. We value a worshiping community that is both meaningful, goes deep, and contagious. It, got ha it can't help but be shared with other people. So that's what we try to be about and how we try to guide ourselves in doing these things. Now, what I want to spend a couple of minutes sharing with you right now is a very practical way that we are living that out right now as a community. And that is our vision of being a congregation of multiple sites. Okay, this is not a, a new idea. Uh, before we ever gathered the very first time, this, this was the plan. This is how we wanted to be present in particularly South Minneapolis. This would be a, a congregation, a group of people, a community of Christ followers that would meet in multiple sites. 
Um, see, Jacob's well isn't just here at field. This is just where we began, all right? And there's nothing intrinsic to the fact that we are at field. We are a people. We are not a place. We could meet anywhere, and we can meet in, in various places at the same time. So this is where we began and, uh, and where we will be expanding from. We really feel that for Jacob Swell's mission and its message and what people are really looking for and what we're offering, that the kind of size that we have here is probably a pretty healthy size. Two to 300 people um, you know, gathering at a time where you have enough people to do the stuff that you want to do and you can be effective. But it's not so huge that you know, you're anonymous forever. You, you don't get known and you aren't able to establish some community. So rather than just growing this and getting it bigger and bigger and finding a larger and larger auditorium, we said, well, can't we just replicate this? Can't we do it by having multiple services, um, you know, maybe on Sunday morning? And can't we do it by going to another place as well? And those are really different strategies. Adding another service here to accommodate people in this community to come to field, maybe at another time on Sunday morning, and then starting another worshiping community that's maybe a little bit further away is a completely separate issue, all right? Because one of the things we know is that for most of us, we really like our community. There are some of you that drive quite a ways to come here, but a lot of you say, you know, I would really like to gather as a church with people that I see at the grocery store, at the club, um, maybe I have my kids in school with, um, I see them at the coffee shop, those sorts of people. I want to bump into the same people. I want my community to have that kind of integrity and that kind of overlap. And we know that, uh, you know, while Jacob's Well uh, draws from a, a pretty wide range of places, that we're pretty clustered to right around a circle around this location. And uh, for instance, if you take a Hiawatha corridor, Highway 55, we pull a lot of people from right up near it, but you go to the other side, almost nobody crosses Hiawatha to come here. So where could we find another community then that is very similar to who we are right now, culturally, and you know, expectations, the spiritual questions are asking, the things they're struggling with, they're very similar to here, so we don't have to reinvent everything. What we're doing here fits that other place. And we could duplicate this. We could expand this community and be a part of what God is trying to do with us. And we're thinking, you know, the other side of Hiawatha would be a great place to plant another embodiment of Jacob's Well. We've had a, a research team has been doing a ton of work on this over the last couple of months to um, understand, uh, you know, is, is that a right place to go? What would be the possible locations? What impact is it going to have on our staff and our budget and programs, all that kind of stuff. And they're doing a great job and are getting close to it. And um, you're going to be getting a lot of information about that from people. Um, but that's what we're working on. So what would change here? I mean, I, I think that's a real natural question to ask is if we were going to do that, and it does sound, I mean, I really believe it sounds like what God is asking us to do. God says, don't just keep this for yourself. I, I want you to share this. I want you to give it to other people as well. How will that affect us here? Well, frankly, not nearly as much as you might be thinking, thinking it will. The main impact that we'll have, certainly over the long run, is that it's going to enrich this community because we're going to be a part of something, uh, a body that is much larger and has more gifts and more, more people to share in what it's all about. Um, how we will do it in a technical sense is that, uh, you know, how we worship in series like this one, you know, it starts this week and it goes through five weeks of uh, Because It Matters and ends. What we'll do is, um, you know, offset those a week. So maybe I kick off this series here, and Nate is leading the band here to, with the music and stuff like that. The next week, I go to the other location, and I kick off that same series, and Nate follows me. And the person who is preaching at the other location, maybe Dawn, comes here and does week two. So you can see how that goes. So what we're able to do is we're able to um, lead worship. We're able to impact two communities at the same time with a very small addition in, in what it takes for us and resources to do it. Uh, we will need another worship leader. Nate will still be in charge of all the music. He's going to be, um, you know, envisioning it, creating it, preparing, that preparing everything that we're doing, but there'll be another worship leader for the other place. Nate will switch back and forth. That other person will switch back and forth. None of us are going to go away. I'm sorry, you'll still see me, you know? Uh, and the same thing with the preaching. I'm not here every week right now. You know, Dawn is preaching. We'll probably, we'll, I'm sure, get another person into the mix. I guarantee you, in terms of worship leaders, in terms of other preachers, um, you know, the standards aren't going to change. We're going to have someone that matches who we are, and what we're trying to be, and probably is better in many ways than we are, and uh, you know, we'll be different and unique in their own ways. Um, it's only going to enrich who we are and what we do. In terms of children's ministries, Heidi will still be in charge of the whole thing, H2O for both campuses, um, but we'll have a dedicated person at each, at each location so that isn't changing week to week. I mean, I think it's okay for me to be here one week and there the other week and then be back. That works okay for us. Um, I think kids need a constant um, presence of who's leading that. 
Um, so that's kind of just a general overview of, of technically how we're intending that to work. And what we think is it really is able to um, give us a scale to then begin to do some things that it's just so hard for us to do as a community here. Um, Aaron Lay just is working so hard on a very, very part-time basis to do stuff with our youth. Um, hopefully it would pr it enable us to um, provide a much larger youth position, maybe something to help with group life, maybe uh, something to help us with our service projects in the community. Um, who knows, but it would give us the ability to, um, to expand and to enlarge what we're able to do and to be more intentional about the things and um, uh, make my time more available to concentrate on some of the things that would help me to um, lead Jacobs Well overall. So those are some of the things that we're looking at. Is it going to be a change? Yeah. It'll be a change. Um, is it going to be some work? Yeah. Uh, you folks are not going to be expected to set up and tear down the two sites. The people that go to the other site, that's their job, all right? If you decide to be a part of that site, that's, that's a totally separate decision on your part. Um, but things are going to change anyway, aren't they? I mean, we aren't who we began with. Um, we started this when we first worshipped. We only knew that there's going to be about 30 people show up here. And all of you folks are here. I mean, that was change. Um, Things will change. God wants it to change. God wants us to become who God is pointing us to. And I think that's going to be okay. What I would like you to do um, as the service ends is just to consider how you feel called in order to this. And uh, this isn't your only chance to think about it, but, but to be prayerful about it. And on your communication card, if you just want to say, I, I would, Greg, I'd be really willing to help with some of the ministries that would that help launch this new congregation. And um, just, you know, keep me in touch and uh, let me know how I could be useful in doing that, uh, and I'd be happy to do that. Just write on, your, um, on the back of your communication card, you know, support, support the second venue or something like that. And uh, we'll know that and we'll be in touch with you. Of course, we'll be in touch with everybody, but we'd love to know that you're ready to do that. If you feel that you're a person who's called to help start this, and you want to be a part of what we call the launch team of people that we would start with to um, begin to move and to um, start the previewing of the service of this second location over the second half of the summer and then into the fall. We're hoping to begin weekly services in October. If you'd like to be a part of that, just write launch team on the back of yours. You're not signing up, you know, in blood on anything, but uh, we'll be in touch with you and make sure you get the information you would need to know to um, discern that a little bit further. The last thing on your uh, outline to let you know that I'm done, okay, um, is this. It's a tendency for us to find this place with our church, with our faith, whatever, where we think we make a deal with God. And God is going to deliver us what we want in our faith. And God is going to help us, you know, handle our lives the way we want them to be handled. And uh, it doesn't work that way. God's got something else in mind. What this fill-in is, is it isn't the plan of Jacob's well to use God. We aren't going to use God to make our dreams come true. It is our plan to be used by God. It isn't Jacob's well's plan to use God, but to be used by God. We think God has called us here to give this away to other people, and in doing that, discover how we can have it ourselves. Let's pray.